Medic isn't a particularly offensive class, I think we all know that. Syringe guns aren't exactly the highest DPS, and a particular medic main TF tuber would even argue that it's meant to be replaced by something better, and he's even quite literally almost a single example of stock being objectively the worst thing in the game. The medic is easily the second most interesting class to me, as everyone needs him, but no one seems to want to play him. He is easily one of the most underplayed yet needed classes in the game. I mean, easily, each of his primaries are the most interesting swap-ups of all the classes. Crits, invulnerability, fast heals, resistive damage. But there's a section in his loadout that is typically reserved for only one unlock that you'll always receive for theoretically mastering Medic and receiving Milestone 3. But there are other options here for that slot, and we're going to talk about all of them. Every single one. Yeah, all of them. I'm Cody, and I'm here to ask one simple question, and hopefully get one simple answer. How bad could they be? I just wanted to say before the video starts, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me grow, it helps you get notifications, and hopefully it'll help you get videos sooner. Uh, I'm aiming for a video every Friday now, so look for that. Thank you. Fun fact, initially this video was going to be just the solemn vow, but when I wrote the script and everything I had to say came out to be around a paragraph and a half, I knew I had to expand the scope, and I needed some help. That's right, after many requests and feedback comments later, I'm finally experimenting with utilizing a competitive standpoint where applicable in the videos. Enter Naga Trinity, a competitive Sixes player medic main who has been helping with the videos where he can. He helps greatly in the TF2 Coaching Classic group, a great resource for anyone who wants to get into the competitive scene. Go check out their Discord for information on how to get into the community and have a new unique experience with a game that you probably thought you knew everything about. And to voice those thoughts for him, we have Ed Weenie, a streamer and local mouse boy that has a pretty good voice to read with. He plays Bloons, Minecraft, TF2 sometimes, and on top of that, he's been helping record footage since the Sydney Sleeper video. His girlfriend is a rabbit. She's not in the video but she streams with him, so don't say I didn't warn you. The Solemn Vow is easily and probably the most useless here for casual play. It only has two stats. You can see enemy health, and this weapon swing- I mean, it fires 10% slower. Above all else, do no harm, and with this weapon, I guess you're not gonna have any problem with that. The problem with the Solemn Vow is that proper team coordination in a casual setting is far and few between. It doesn't happen, like, ever. It's kind of a crucial fact that it's needed to be properly utilized here. In fact, if proper teamwork existed all of the time, this weapon would be redundant because you'd have a properly balanced team. And what's on a properly balanced team? A spy who can do effectively the same thing without any extra unlocks that arguably will waste a space. But do you know where proper team coordination does always exist in some form or fashion, and also spies are typically absent? Competitive sixes. Here's what Naga had to say about the Solemn Vow. Often, Medic's most forgotten melee weapon is the Solemn Vow. This busty white man grants the power of seeing your enemy's health, uber, and the ability to whack him on the head 10% faster than the uber saw. While in a casual setting, this sort of spy vision is largely useless. With an organized team, this allows you to know the overall health of the entire enemy team, enabling you to push or play passive on relative team health. In sixes, the most important skill for a medic is tracking the enemy uber charge. As if you are at a significant uber charge disadvantage, you can send in your roamer to force their medic. Or, while at a significant advantage, you can push with it. While this is normally done mentally by the medics using their own uber charge as reference as well as the overall time passed, this is going to be a tedious task for a medic. Who can't track uber automatically yet? And even for those that can, it's largely just a guessing game. And the soul involved fixes that. With a quick peek at the enemy medic, you can have a completely accurate, real-time reading of his uber charge, not to mention his health. During teamfights, a good medic can glance at each person on the enemy team 
and called Focus Fire on the weak opponents, drastically increasing a team's overall effectiveness. And the 10% extra swing speed over the Uber Saw is simply a cherry on top. For a while, the Solemn Vile was banned in most competitive leagues, fearing that the advantage given would force other medics to run the same weapon. Only recently did RJL add the Solemn Vile to the whitelist, and it quickly became apparent that while the Solemn Vile does afford the medic a tangible advantage, others preferred a clutch potential of the Uber Saw. So this one is a weird one to explain. Uh, you have less health, but you can collect organs with every hit. So for every organ you have, you'll retain 15% of your uber charge with a maximum retention of 60%. But you'll only retain this if you had that charge in the first place. To explain, if you have 48% but two organs, you'll retain 30% only. But if you have 48% with four organs, you'll still only retain that 48%. The Vitasaw is not useless. But going for melee attacks as a medic can be difficult, and if you're a confident enough medic, you might not even feel the need to get that retention bonus at all, because you'll feel confident enough that you won't die. But for people who do like to get up close and personal, a last minute Vitasaw on a demo night charging you at roughly 88 miles an hour can be a good thing since you'll likely die anyway if the demo night is worth his nitroglycerin. Fuck wait, demo nights don't use explosives. Again, this is in a casual setting, assuming you're on your own and unable to communicate to a pocket in time, your death is in bound. For a competitive setting, I'd imagine you'll be far better protected, and less likely to come across a demo knight in the first place. Practically, going for an uber retention is usually a riskier thing than just keeping out of the danger in the first place, because the enemy team will always know what they're doing. However, let's give it over to Naga, as this could still have a different story. What may surprise you is that the stock bone saw may not be the worst option for a medic, depending on who you ask. In my opinion, that title belongs to the Vita Saw, the only medic melee with a significant downside. While organ collecting seems to be rather fitting for the class that wields this rusty needle, it has been banned in competitive sixes ever since the release of the weapon with competitive admins fearing that the ability to respawn with greater uber charge may completely throw off the fine art of uber tracking. In no restriction sixes, this weapon still never sees the light outside of a medic main's backpack, as the passive minus 10 health downside is far too great in a class that is frequently caught with single digit health already. The Vita Saw does not allow for the same clutch potential as the uber saw, as responding with a number in your bar above zero is seen as significantly less powerful then hitting an enemy and getting a free 25% uber charge, followed by a prompt uber away. So this one has honestly always been an overlook for me. To be clear, it's not terrible. In fact, it's highly useful during a particularly intense fight where your teammates are taking on damage faster than you can realistically recover all of them. It also helps given that you'll gain an extra plus 3 health per second on top of the healing you'll gain by default if it is active. The Amputator does have a damage penalty of 20%, but given the weapon's passive utility, you probably shouldn't be using it as your main attacker anyway. It's a very useful tool to have as well, especially for someone like me that has trouble finding everyone who needs healing. I mean, with a cluster of teammates, it can often become a struggle to get your crosshair over the correct targets, as it feels like everyone is intentionally trying to get in your line of sight to make you heal them rather than let me act in a priority, you fucking skunts. But let's give it back to Naga and see how it works in competitive. The Amputators are less commonly used medic melee weapon for competitive formats. Their primary draw is not the unique taunt effect, but the additional self-healing given upon holding the weapon out. In specific situations, this may allow a medic to escape what might have been certain death. However, the medic's passive self-healing is affected by recent damage taken, and this applies to the amputator as well, lessening that extra 3 health per second advantage to a mere 1 health per second advantage before ramping back up, effectively keeping you at a pitiful self-healing rate unless you manage to escape the fight with some tricky footwork. There have been rare occasions where the amputator managed to save my life and allow me to return my team with just a sliver of health. However, these situations are few and far in between, and if your team is able to defend their medic well, the bonus self may be trivial at best. 
This is probably what you'll see most medic players using. It's reliable. It's older than time itself. It's the Uber Saw. Do I really need to say anything? Anything at all? It's the Uber Saw. Look, a few people who guessed this video's topic actually suggested doing all of the melees except the Uber Saw. I'm assuming because it's been covered to death, but I feel like it would be an injustice to leave it out of this first bulk episode of the lot. The Uber Saw has two stats, 25% Uber Charge added on hit, but it swings 20% slower. The thing that drives medics to this point is the prior stat, 25% Uber on each hit. It's a no-brainer, that's a fourth of a charge. The time with which you actually use the Bone Saw is rare though, a spy here, an odd overextending scout there, but that's self-defense after your pocket dies and no one else is around. Guess I've got to FIGHT MY WAY OUT! The Uber Saw is tried and true. It's been, for many years, my go-to. It's been practically everyone's go-to. It's one of the few weapons whose stats haven't been touched. Ever. A few minor changes like granting Uber when striking NG buildings was added, or no granting Uber from disguised spies have been made, but it's the same Uber Saw at its core. And finally, Naga once again has his input on the Ubersaw in a competitive scene. The Ubersaw is seen as a holy grail among competitive medics, and for good reason. The ability to turn the tides of a game with one or two hits on an enemy is a very powerful tool, and has completely changed the course of competitive matches in the past. While the Ubersaw looks like it doesn't offer much survivability to the medic on paper, the simple ability to jump from 75% to 100 and run away, completely invincible, can get a medic out of many sticky situations. As such, it is the most commonly used medic melee weapon among Sixes and Highlander medics alike, and is likely to remain as such for a long time. Medic's melee isn't always a good first choice for combat. You will ideally want to stay as far from danger as possible, but that's not always a possibility. Sometimes danger comes to you, and the syringe gun's needle fall off can make aiming hard if you can't lead this weird projectile properly. Vitasaw can be a last minute uber save, Ubersaw could be a free uber in the right scenarios, the amputator can only help your healing crusade, and the solemn vow lets you be a discount spy without the slick insta-kill and stealthy demeanor. Competitive is more often than not a completely different story, and I hope some of you understand now that I have never spoken on a competitive stance. Please stop telling me my opinions did not cover competitive. That's gonna be all from me today. Game over.